Today we're looking at subsurface scattering, which is when light shines through a translucent material and picks up some of that internal colour. We're going to apply it to a folded shader to give the effect of light shining through leaves. If you'd like a bit more background on the approach we're going to take to make this subsurface scattering shader, go and check out this great two-part write-up from Alan Zucconi. I'll pop a link in the description, so head over there and give it a read. I'm using Amplify Shader Editor to quickly and easily put together these shaders, but you could also use Shader Graph, which comes with Unity, or write the code yourself. Analyzing the effect, the first thing you'll notice is that it's only visible when the light source is behind the objects. If we rotate the sun around to in front of the objects, you'll notice that the non-subsurface scattering material looks identical. So how do we achieve this? Since we want to limit the effect to the side of the mesh facing away from the light, we might be tempted to take the N.L, which is used to illuminate the surface of the mesh facing the light, and negate it, to instead illuminate the surface of the mesh facing away from the light. But a more appropriate approach will actually be to ignore the surface normals altogether, and instead use a dot product of the view direction and the negated light direction. This will give us a soft glow that shines through whenever the light approaches the viewing vector, that is, as it passes behind the object. Now the next part of the effect is actually to increase the illumination where the mesh is thinner because more light passes through there. Now unfortunately without ray tracing we don't have access to the history of the light ray, so we have to fake it. If you think about the sphere we have, the area that the light would pass through the least from the light source to the camera would be the outside of the sphere, so it makes sense that the areas towards the centre of the sphere would be less illuminated. This isn't always the case, but it's a rough approximation that gives us a reasonably convincing effect. The first thought you might have is to use a Fresnel mask to boost the areas at glancing angles. If you soften this rim light and multiply it by the previous view.negated light direction, it works reasonably well. But a better solution is actually to add in the surface normal to the light direction before we calculate the dot product. With a multiplier to fade in the strength, this gives us a smooth fall off that eases in as the light passes behind the object and is more appropriate for our subsurface scattering effect. If you'd like more control over the fall off, you could raise it to a power and use another dot product to scale it. You could also use a texture to define the areas of the mesh that should receive more or less translucency. And that's basically it. We take that as a mask, multiply it by an internal color, and that gives us the subsurface scattering contribution. Finally, just add that back into whatever standard lighting model you're using, and that is your basic subsurface scattering shader done. Now how do we take this and apply it to foliage? So just say you wanted to make a clump of leaves for a tree. Throw a bunch of quads together and slap an opacity map on there, but unfortunately our shader doesn't seem to work well with this geometry. The first part of the effect, where the mesh is illuminated when the light's behind it, will work fine with this approach. But the second part of the effect, where we try to approximate how thin or thick the mesh is, relies on the surface normals. And that's fine for a sphere or any other solid shape, but this mess of quads with normals going off in every direction is just not going to work. Now the standard approach with foliage has always been to tweak the mesh normals to more accurately represent the shape of the tree or bush. Even before we worry about the subsurface scattering, it's a good idea to do this just to prevent the base gliding from looking like garbage. Something like a round clump of tree leaves will work better with outward pointing normals, whereas a grass billboard might work better with upward pointing normals. Now you can either pre-bake this on your model before it's imported into your game engine, or you can do it in shader. Check out the polycount foliage wiki if you want some tools to tweak the normals in advance. And that's the best solution, but I'm just going to generate new normals in shader because my trees are pretty spherical. And because why not? To do this, simply use the vertex positions instead of the world normal, and transform it from object into world space. Each vertex position vector 3, if you think about it as a direction from the origin of the mesh instead of a position, is basically a vector pointing away from the center of the mesh. If we transform this into world space, we can use these as our spherical normals. Now, we're almost there. The only thing remaining that stops this effect from working is the geometry towards the center of the leaf clump. It's picking up more light than it should. All we want to do now is mask that area towards the middle of the clump. Now you could do it by baking in vertex colors and multiplying by that. Or if you calculated new spherical normals before in shader, instead of baking them, you can simply get the magnitude of those vectors, and that will give you a fall off from the center of the clump, which is basically the distance from the vertice to the center of the mesh. Now this spherical fall off, either via vertex colors or calculated in shader, is really useful to have for other reasons as well, such as faking ambient occlusion towards the middle of the clump, and also for masking the strength of the wind if you're animating the vertices to give the leaves a bit of movement. We'll have a look how to do that in another video. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at how to achieve a foliage translucency effect. We covered a few things very quickly and skipped over some extra features that you might want to do to make the shader more robust in different lighting conditions. 
Some other things I like to add is an extra punch through on the main sun directional light and also a light attenuation multiplier so that shadows can mask the effect. If you got anything out of this video at all, please click the like button and subscribe, it helps a lot. If you didn't like it, please leave a dislike and let me know in the comments what I can improve. If you'd like more information about the topics covered in this video, please check out my Patreon, where I have a more detailed written explanation of the shader as well as the source files that you can play with, take apart and use in your projects. Thanks so much for watching. I love games. See you next time.